Terrence Handley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure healing, miracle working love. I want to talk to you today about Israel, prophecy and partnership, or progress, protection and position. This is a message to Benjamin Netanyahu. Bibi, the prophet Daniel, was given a message by the angel Gabriel that in the future the false Mashiach will command that the sacrifices and offerings in the temple be stopped. This, of course, substantiates the fact that the third temple will be built. You can check that in the Tanakh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. The Shias in Iran, unlike Sunni Muslims, believe that their Mahdi will appear when Allah decrees it, not by causing worldwide destruction first, which is the Sunni belief, like an invitation, and the Shia Twelvers believe that the end-time conflict will be delayed until the return of their Ahmadi, the Twelfth Imam. Since 3,000 years ago, the tabernacle of God was in Jerusalem, and knowing that Satan did not invent Islam until 1,700 years later, the power players in Israel have a clean shot for the goal. So what is the goal, and how diligently should Israel work toward it? So let's talk about Israel, prophecy and partnership, or progress, protection, and position. The goal, the goal for Israel is to move forward as a representative nation of God on planet Earth and to work in alignment with the Holy Scripture, the Tanakh, so that miracles and the blessing of God Almighty will superintend Israel's progress, protection, and position. There are, at the same time, several earth-related administrations that Israel has to align with kingdom theocracy while waiting for Mashiach. Some of these are as follows. Economic administration, geopolitical development, technological entrepreneurship, and longevity of citizenry with increased population. It's the purpose of this teaching to develop the first, economic administration. Let's talk about what is the purpose of economic administration. To properly administer any sector of humanitarian concourse of the marketplace, an objective real-time observation must be made of the resultant polar extremes of sector individuals versus global interactions, plus a projected futurist view of what-if options. What will be the results, the effect of economic decisions upon the government citizenry, in this case Israelis, and specific global partners, extranational entities? According to the prophets, in the final battle with the false Mashiach, the Antichrist, the Lord will provide a miracle win. But before that time, right now, the enemy of Israel, Satan, does not want Israel controlling the Middle East either militarily or economically. Like a woman who is carrying a child in her womb with a prophetic promise, Israel has to maintain and care for the life of that child before it is born as a nation in a day. Read Tanakh, Isaiah, Eshuahu, chapter 66, verses 7 to 9. And so to protect herself, Israel must maintain her place in destiny. Israel must take advantage of every relationship God provides for her advantage. All truth and things to come can include truth about relationships, economy, governments, geopolitics, and entrepreneurship. Israel has three great assets at this time based upon truth. One of them is Israel's unique relationship. Israel has a new friend, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America. Another great asset, Israel's unique calling. Israel, as long as it obeys scriptural mandates dictated by the Lord God, will have divine direction. And thirdly, Israel's unique door. Israel must, as my mother used to say, make hay while the sun shines. How? by working in lockstep with the USA for the following. Number one, implore that the USA make Jerusalem the home of the USA Embassy. Number two, develop technological partnerships with the USA, both in research and development and marketing. Israel will be helping the USA, and President Trump will respond in other beneficence. Number three, make settlers part of Israel, with equal and just rights as Israelis should have. Number four, 
undo any globalist ties, including UNESCO, that are not beneficial to Israel. God does not need help. See my report, March 1, 2016, in the podcast satellite, titled God, Geopolitics, and Gold. I placed a link for that in the show notes of the podcast. As a matter of fact, God likes it when he gets the credit. Now let's talk about the history of economic administration. B.B. the fall of Babylon will be synonymous with the fall of the global financial system. We know from archaeological findings, financial transcripts, and recordations that the ancient Babylonians, the ones around 2000 B.C., invented mutual funds and mortgages. Now looking forward via prophecy, the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, informs us that New Babylon's merchants are globally connected and influential. That is, before their demise. You can read in Revelation chapter 18, verse 23. And the light of a lamp will not shine in you any longer. And the voice of the bridegroom and bride will not be heard in you any longer. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, because all the nations were deceived by your sorcery, that is, by the sorcery of Babylon. By the way, consult my book, Babylon the Bitch, Enemy of Israel, for more detailed information on New Babylon. I placed a link for that in the show notes of the podcast also. Now to pave the way, B.B., for the false Mashiach, the Antichrist system of new global currency, citizens will be prepared, and they will want anything to help them in the future. However, in the paragraph of time before the time of Jacob's trouble, the Great Tribulation, even Israel's enemies will want to do business with her. That is, if you obey, B.B., what I share with you in this podcast teaching. Israel is about to be blessed abundantly, and the USA will be blessed for joining in her fight. Now let's talk about the future of economic administration. BB do not look for a 10-region confederacy arising from the EU, but rather a 10-region Islamic confederacy, the new Islamic order, the NIO, with its hub in Turkey. New Babylon will likely be a seaport city in Turkey. But why now do I seemingly digress here? And why does Israel have to know this? Because Israel has to divest herself of any global ties that will rob her of the blessings of Almighty God. Remember, God wants to receive the glory. You know, economic crises are normally the result of either of two components. Unstable or dishonest economies, a.k.a. governments, or catalytic stimulus, a precipitator. However, the final phase of globalism, the collapse of global commerce, will not be caused by either natural or catalytic forces. It will be the result, the effect, of the wrath of Almighty God. You can read that in the Brit Hadashah in Revelation chapter 18. Now let's discuss, B.B., the rewards for economic administration. Israel is at the orifice of her greatest opportunities before the time of Jacob's trouble. By the way, you might want to look at Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 4 to 7 in the Tanakh. Historically, the worst global pandemics of the past killed off between one-fourth and one-third of the population, or between 25% and 33% of the world's population. According to Fabius Maximus research, the second generation after this present one will only be 40% as large as today's and the fourth generation will only be 15% as large. So you need to deal with population diminution. In addition, we see that one-fourth, or 25% of the global population, is killed during seal number four in the Revelation. And later, another one-third, 33%, is killed, which will leave only 50% of the global population. You can read that in the Brit Hadashah, Revelation chapter 9, verses 14 to 18. Israel should be cognizant, B.B., and be forewarned that occasional populist uprisings, such as in Brexit and the USA recent election, are only temporary blockades to new global governance and global commerce. Israel, working with the USA while she can, and staying aloof from the UN and global economic initiatives, can reap her greatest economic rewards since the days of King Solomon. By the way, only those nations who favor Israel will succeed during the next 30 years. And Bibi, to help you in your prophetic service for Mashiach, 
and for Israel, I've listed four great resources in the show notes of the podcast. Number one, the book Prophecy, Transition, and Miracles, Healing Nations. Number two, the book Israel and Middle East, Past, Present, and Future. Number three, Enhanced Humans, Mystery Matrix, and dealing specifically with the history, present, and future of Israel. The Mossad needs to study this book. And number four, the booklet, Map of the End Times, Future News Now. Prime Minister Netanyahu, it's time to step up to the plate which God has prepared for you and for Israel. Work with and request from President Trump the items that I listed in Israel's unique door, which again are as follows. Implore the USA to make Jerusalem the home of the USA Embassy. Develop technological partnerships with the USA, both in research and development and marketing. Israel will be helping the USA, and President Trump will respond in other beneficence. Make settlers part of Israel with equal and just rights as Israelis should have. Undo any globalist ties, including UNESCO, that are not beneficial to Israel. God does not need help. As a matter of fact, God likes it when he gets the credit. Bibi, make hay while the sun shines. Let me remind you what it tells us in the book of Esther in the Tanakh. Who knows? And I'm going to insert your name in there, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Benjamin, Bibi, who knows whether you didn't come into your elect position precisely for such a time as this. This has been your friend, Prince Handley, coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. Baruch Abba, Bashim Adonai.